our species spotlight for this week is the ocelot. And the ocelots are found uh, everywhere from Texas, New Mexico, Arizona, and the United States, the whole way through Central and South America in different parts. Uh, they're one of the smaller wild cats, but they're definitely one of the fiercest. Um, they, they'll take down prey their own size, even up to fawns, um, to larger animals, a lot bigger than they are. They're pretty aggressive little cats. And the ocelots are very arboreal, which means they, they live in the trees. They spend a lot of the time in the trees. And they have hook-like claws, they have very sharp claws, and they're very agile. That, that tail of theirs acts as, a, as balance, and it keeps them keeps them upright in the trees and actually they can climb up the underside of branches and for the animals that live in South America, Central America, where they eat a lot of birds, a lot of monkeys, um, they need to be able to to really adapt to living in the trees to catch their own prey. They're also big eaters of snakes in the wild, so a lot of the snakes in the rainforest are up in the trees, so they find them that way. Back in the 60s and the 70s, they were brought into the United States as, as pets and they were also a big part of the fur trade. So as the ocelots got pulled out of the wild, they started to get isolated in different areas of their habitat. The coat also acts as camouflage. That, that spotted, barred, striped pattern is kind of jumbled up and it helps to break up their outline. So whenever they're hunting in the trees and the dappled light through the branches and the leaves, it really breaks up their outline well and, and keeps them very camouflaged. Uh, unfortunately, with the ocelots having such a beautiful pelt, that's, that's part of their downfall. Back in the early 60s, 70s, they were they were actually used for fur coats, and it takes quite a few ocelots to make a fur coat. And although that trade is illegal now, um, it is still done illegally. And of course, the damage had been done as so many of the ocelots were wiped out just to fill the pet trade and to make fur coats. And at one time, they were very popular pets. There was even a television show about a detective that had a pet ocelot, and it was it was one of the most popular shows in the 60s and 70s. We have several ocelots out of Big Cat Rescue and taking care of these guys, everybody comments on how strong their smell is. Their urine where they spray is very, very strong. It's actually the, the strongest smelling cat that we have out here. People always often wonder why. They're also in the rainforest where there's a lot of rain to wash away their scent. So they have to have a very strong, a strong urine, a strong scent to mark their territory and also to find other ocelots. And as we said earlier, there are a few ocelots left in the United States. There's a population in Texas, um, possibly populations in Arizona or New Mexico. One of the problems that the ocelots face, of course, is habitat destruction and becoming isolated in these tiny pockets and, and inbreeding and not being able to find other ocelots. And, and something that you would never think would affect wildlife, like the big fences on the borders to keep out illegal immigration, that has a great effect on the wildlife because they can't travel their normal corridors and they can't get to their habitat. They can't find other animals. They can't find mates. So something like that is having a huge impact on these guys. They become stuck on one side. So it's not likely that the, the population of ocelots in Texas is a viable population, meaning they don't have diverse enough genetics to prevent becoming inbred and basically dying out. At Big Cat Rescue, we feel that it's just not enough to keep these guys in cages and, and, and try to keep them from becoming pets or fur coats. We also want to try to help the animals in the wild. And about the best we can do that, really, is to preserve their habitat in the wild. And Big Cat Rescue is actually working in the country of Guyana. And we're working there to preserve habitat for, mostly for jaguars, because they're bigger and, and just they're they're a species that if you protect their habitat, you're also going to protect the habitat of ocelot margays and besides the cats of a whole host of wildlife, including monkeys and birds. So what we're doing, we're, we're helping to establish uh, ecotourism there and establish lodges where people can go and view these animals in the wild and really to let the native population, the people that live there, know how valuable these animals are and that keeping them alive is way more beneficial economically than to just kill them and make a quick buck on selling their pelt or selling them to some tourist as a pet. So that's one way that Big Cat Rescue is trying to help out ocelots in the wild. That's something that you can do too.